Hi, welcome to Stoughton Spotlight. I'm your host, Jeffrey Pickett. On this episode, we'll be previewing the upcoming special town meeting, which will be taking place November 27th at the Daw Elementary School. Among the topics we'll discuss on this show will be downtown redevelopment and the push for a new public safety building. And my guests on this episode to help me discuss these issues are Selectman Bob O'Regan and Christine Howe. So thank you both for joining me. Thanks for having us, Jeff. Thank you for having us. So before we get into the town meeting discussion, uh, we're filming the on um, no, we're filming on November fourteenth, the night after you appointed a new town manager, Robin Muskian, and I was just hoping that I could get your reaction about that appointment. Obviously, there were two uh, finalists for the position, and the board unanimously went with Muxian. So uh, let me just get your thoughts before we dive into the town meeting aspect of the show. Sure. Do you, uh, I can start. Um, so as, as we heard last night at our, at our meeting, um, you know, the board was very uh, pleased with the two candidates that were brought forward by the, um, the search committee that was in place through our consultant community paradigm associates. And um, I think after reviewing the applicants and the interviews, um, you know, we realized that we had a tough decision to make, but that we felt that Robin's uh, experience, um, Dr. Muxian's experience uh, in the city of Cranston working at that administrative level um, was going to bring in, you know, her her knowledge and her, her depth in working with all departments right off the get-go. Uh, so we felt she could kind of hit the ground running and, and be that professional manager immediately upon taking uh, the position. And so that was a lot of the reasoning behind um, my decision and my vote. And I think that was reflected in some of the other members' votes as well. Bob? All of that. <laughs> um, and and I, I'm, uh, I, I was particularly concerned about um, whoever the town manager would be, their uh, commitment in how they would, that they would treat town employees well, that they would respect town employees, that they had experience in dealing with collective bargaining, understanding how uh, to make collective bargaining work, because we are going to be entering into negotiations on contracts with eight units now, uh, right away. So to me, it was important to engage someone who has experience for that. So I got the names of people who she'd negotiated with over the past 10 or 15 years or participated in negotiating, and I, and I reached out to them and I talked to them uh, as, as a way to satisfy myself that one of those criteria, in addition to what Christine talked about, could be met. And it's that sort of overall town-wide management experience that one candidate had that another candidate wasn't yet at. And at this time in the town, it was difficult to select between these two very qualified, as the qualified candidates, as the screening committee said, uh, e each one would make an excellent town manager. I think that's true. And so our, our job was to find which of these fit into the needs we have now and the needs we see coming up. And as Christine said, the ability to engage with having done it before, to me, was, was, an, was a very important aspect with, um, with Robin. Now, you're tasked with making the best decision, not necessarily most popular decision, and sometimes those are the same, sometimes those aren't. Uh, in this case, how difficult was it for you to select somebody who was not a resident of the community when the other finalist, Jonathan Beter, is a longtime, lifelong resident of the community and has deep Stoughton roots. Many, many people in town know him and are already familiar with him. How difficult was that process for you to go against somebody who you know, is, a, is a Stoughton guy, so to speak? I'm going to say we didn't go against anybody. That's mm -hmm. not the way I viewed it, and I wouldn't view it that way. It, I, I view our jobs, and my job as one vote, is to make the selection that, on the whole, is the best choice we can make. Um, I thought a Stoughton resident was a big, would have been a big, big plus. Uh, it was a highly desirable attribute for anybody to serve in the position. 
and that had to get weighed against some of the other attributes and skills and experiences that we need in the position. And uh, I, I, what I don't think is appropriate is to say there is any single aspect to the qualifications of any candidate that should control. So I weighed uh, hands-on experience in municipal management um, yeah, and what that experience told me and where it happened, because not everybody brings the same niches, where, where it happened, how it happened, and then uh, I you know, both gave excellent interviews. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and that frankly is a reason why when we scheduled it, um, I, I gave a week between the interviews to when we would deliberate because we needed to think about it and I believe each of us did a little more work uh, reviewing other things, uh, doing, doing some investigation to get where we got. Yeah, and I'll just add that I think, um, you know, despite, um, you know, Dr. Muxian not being a resident of Stoughton and as Bob mentioned, you know, that is one of, one of the things that we had to weigh and, and consider. I think it's also our job as a board to sort of lead by example and, you know, let the town manager know that we want you to be invested in this community and, and be kind of ingrained in the community and, and show that commitment to Stoughton, whether you live here or not. So I think as, you know, that'd be that will be clearly articulated to her. And I think she, she appreciate uh, kind of understood that and appreciated it when she was explaining her, um, her ties and her roots to Cranston and how she um, was involved there with the community in terms of um, going to the football games and things like that. So I think that investment um, from being a resident uh, will be clearly articulated on our on our behalf in terms of what we want to see from her. And I think that she'll be able to um, step up and sort of learn about why Stoughton's so great. And I mean, when you're applying to be a town manager in different towns, you don't just pick them at random because they're up for you know a position. I think you have to, they do their research too and they decide if they want to actually come to that community and work in that community. So. I think I saw that in, in her responses, and, and I think it'll be clear from how we lead as a board uh, our expectations for her. So, And the, the charter says that the town manager, a new town manager, has a year to move to the community unless the board of selectmen chooses to waive that requirement. Is that something that you're considering um, uphol upholding that requirement or, or waiving it as uh, the previous boards have done for, for example, Michael Hartman? All, all I can say is that the, the motion was to make an offer, mm -hmm. and so we're talking to her, mm -hmm. and obviously that's one of the things that's being discussed. So let's move on with our final 20 minutes uh, to talk about what I said we would at the top of the program. Add, and that's one more thing to that sure. because it's important. Um, whether you live in Stoughton or not, whether you are the world's best on paper, municipal manager or not. What matters is whether you're doing the job that the people in the town expect you to do, which means the board of selectmen in our town sets for whoever the town manager are. It might be clear, articulated, achievable goals, and that systematically the performance in meeting those goals is reviewed carefully. And if the goals need to be adjusted because sometimes things just don't work, they get adjusted. If the performance isn't satisfactory, it has to improve. It doesn't matter to the taxpayers, this is my opinion, so much where you live if you're the town manager. It's important, but to those of us in town, what matters in a town manager is you do the job as well as can be expected of you to do. There's a perception, and I agree with it, that if you are a resident of the town, you're going to do the job better. But the bottom line is having clear, articulated goals of performance, measuring those, and giving feedback on them is wherever, wherever the a town manager may come from is our job to do, and I think we intend to do that w with this one. Mm -hmm. So moving on to the, the special town meeting, uh, which again is going to start November 27th at the Daw Elementary School, looking at the warrant potentially could spill over to the 29th, I believe is the other day that's been set aside. Um, that's November. So looking at the warrant, picking out probably the, the biggest headline article would be the State Theater. So uh, explain to me where that is right now um, and why the Board of Selectmen decided to get involved 
in the way it's getting involved right now? Well, I can probably answer your sort of second question mm -hmm. first. Um, in the spring, the, the board voted to put together the uh, downtown task force, and that group is comprised of uh, the town's economic development director, Pam McCarthy, um, the interim town manager, Mark Tisdale, and then uh, representatives from the various groups in town, that co committees and boards in town that would be involved in helping with the redevelopment of the downtown, including a representative from the planning board, um, the Stoughton Redevelopment Authority, and two members of the community who are um, both a local commercial broker and a property owner in the downtown. And so the, the charge of that group is really to spur economic development in our downtown so that we can um, start making it this town center that we envision through our master plan and our downtown development plan. Um, so that group has a number of initiatives that it's pursuing and part of um, those deliverables and objectives include ensuring there is a draw to the downtown. Um, as through our research and what we've seen in other successful downtowns and especially the New England area, is there's one main reason for uh, residents to come to the downtown that then allows businesses and restaurants to thrive. Um, so in um, Norwood, for example, they have their recreation facilities in the downtown. So that draws their residents there and the other businesses surrounding that have really um, been successful as a result. So we envision in Stoughton um, the theater being sort of that linchpin and that key anchor tenant to um, the rest of the development and success of those local restaurants and businesses. So really um, the sort of part of this is is that this task force sees theater as an integral you know, step in terms of having the downtown revitalized. Um, and it's also you know, articulated in every master plan and plan that, and study that has been done on the downtown uh, up to this point. So there's no question that it's an important uh, piece to actually having a successful uh, Stoughton Center at this point. So going about and acquiring it, um, the, right now, correct me if I'm wrong, the current property owner of the theater is threatening potential demolition of the theater. Um, and so at this point, you're looking for the, the town through the Board of Selectmen to step in and essentially save the theater. Is that correct? That's a good yeah. way to put it. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so let, 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 our preference would be that the property owner would change his thinking. Our preference would be to engage with the property owner, which we've tried to do and continue to try to do, even as late as today. I was on the phone trying to uh, pursue getting getting things set up, and hopefully, a meeting will happen. Um, that's been tried and hasn't been successful, but we get some sense that uh, there's a willingness to meet. So that would be the ideal way to do it, because there are things that a private property owner can do. And, and there are things that, a, that the town can do with a private property owner to make it work. But as Christine was saying, getting the theater up and running has been a, a real pivot point in the downtown redevelopment since the master plan work began. And if you look at other communities where the theaters have come back, you see the, the benefit that has th thrown in those areas, which is what we're looking to have. So we see, as a policy statement, the town has said through the master plan, planning board adopted, the board of selectmen adopted. It's been sent to the state department of uh, economic development. So this is our, this is our, our announced. This is what we would like to achieve. We learned about the potential demolition. I can't remember exactly when, but it might, sometime in August, I think. And I just want to clarify that the owner, because I think a lot of people might assume that the owner of the building is the friends of the state theater. They're, they're actually not. They're just tenants they're of. They're tenants. Correct. Right. They're tenants. So as you were saying in August. So we, in August, I think it came to our attention that there was a, a clear intent to demolish the building. And we, if you demolish it, it's not possible to put it, to put Humpty Dumpty back together again. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, so my own view is on a number of things, uh, especially since this is a clear articulated view vision that the town has had that came through a number of visioning studies. I think you were at some of them mm -hmm. the, when the master plan was done. We had you know, citizens coming. We had many visioning plans. If this is something that's going to happen, that is we lose the theater, it should be an affirmative decision by town meeting to say, 
we're going to lose it. And we understand we're going to lose it, and town meeting is okay with it. Rather than, I think, what has sometimes happened, which is stuff happens, a decision, people think a decision wasn't made by the town, but it was. And that decision was, we're not going to do anything. And as a result, we don't anticipate the consequences. We don't decide the consequences. So our view, our vision is the theater should be saved, it should be restored. And the way to do that is go to town meeting. And the timing is such that we don't, we don't think we have the luxury of time to let this wait. Otherwise, we wouldn't do it in a fall special town meeting. So once the town meeting votes on this, or town meeting, let, I should rephrase that. What is town meeting being asked to vote on? Because I was looking at the, the warrant article and the dollar amount that's listed would not fully fund the renovations of the theater. Um, it's merely funding the acquisition that's right. of the yes. theater. So how much money are we talking about that the town would either be borrowing or, or using CPC funds potentially? Well, the idea is for the funding to come from the CPC fund, the Community Preservation Committee, and I'll say the middle name is preservation. All right. So you've got, you, you're preserving a historical site in the town, you're preserving a cultural site in the town, and you're promoting an economic development site in the town. Um, so that would be the acquisition funds. There are, and Christine is more familiar on this than I am because this is work that the downtown committee is doing, but the acquisition is what's going to give us the opportunity to put the funding together to redevelop it. One of the great things the Friends of the State Theater was able to do is to, is to assemble ideas on how we go about getting it done. And what we're trying to do is pick up from that work and continue it. So is this one point, the uh, figure that's cited in the warrant article is 1.6 million. Is that still the figure that you would be asking for a town meeting to approve? Yes. Okay. And so what, so now the, let's say that it's passed and the town has the, the building and it, it has acquired the building. Um, what's next? Where does the Friends of the State Theater, that group, play into this? Who, who becomes the day-to-day -day operator of the, or overseer of the, the building? It, you know, is this, because I think that's where kind of a lot of people have questions is, you know, that towns don't usually go into the theater business. Um, and so who, who runs this once the town acquires it? Yeah, so there's, um, you know, there's no intent for the town to be in the theater business. Mm. So <laughs> you're very right in stating that point. Um, and I think also what you're kind of alluding to is the, the big number, the big question of what the renovation and rehabilitation costs look like. Um, you know, at this point, we are somewhere in the range um, based on the numbers we have from the Friends of State Theater's work and um, some, you know, work that we've done, somewhere between maybe nine million, around nine million, seven to nine million for full renovation to be completely historically renovated and rehabilitated. And that's in addition, not to interrupt, but in addition to the 1.6 million acquisition? That would be other funds that would be needed to okay. accomplish that, so not acquisition. And I don't think the town is in the position to expect itself to pay for that. I don't think it's our intent to have the town pay for that and or to use you know CPC or public funding to do that. Our goal is to have um, a public-private partnership, essentially, uh, a nonprofit group in place that would be in charge of doing this capital campaign and this fundraising. Um, and the idea is to open the theater sort of in phases, even, so have it, you know, ready to open on that first level, while other renovations are happening on the balcony level, or you know, additional um, fundraising is being done to complete the remainder of the the renovations. Um, and as Bob mentioned, what what happens once the town acquires it, and this is either put into a, a grantor relationship with a trust or a nonprofit that's comprised of these these other entities like the State Theater or other groups that have expressed interest, such as Old Colony Y. Um, once that happens, um, the the grant opportunities and the funding opportunities are, you know, the doors are opened. Um, there's mass development provides um, bonding up to about seven million. For, for groups, um, nonprofits, something like the Stoughton Redevelopment Authority, or this group that would maybe take over um, once the town acquires the property. So those types of programs exist and are out there, Mass Cultural Council grants, um, you know, economic development grants, and, and so really the big holdup at this point is, is 
the ownership and not having ownership of that building. Um, so what we envision is, is once the town acquires it, to essentially turn it over to that, that group that would sort of manage that day to day and do the fundraising and capital campaign to get it ready to open so it can start recuperating some of that revenue. Now is that necessarily, no, I, just listening to the way you're wording that, that's not necessarily the Friends of the State Theater then? Um, at this point, I would say it's not necessarily the Friends of the State Theater, um, but they have been highly involved and are really one of the, the reasons that the theater is still in existence. Um, they've been doing a ton of work over the last several years to set out a capital um, plan to um, you know, make connections with interested parties that would be able to come in and provide some funding or support for the programs. Uh, they have connections with other theaters in the area and you know, their, their group itself is, is very well versed and pretty deep in its knowledge. So um, I, you know, they'll be involved. I think that's pretty clear that they will be involved in some capacity um, just because of all the information they have, the amount of work they've put into this and all they've done to really preserve that building for the last however many years, you know, 10 years or so. Um, so I don't think it would be solely them um, because, you know, there's a lot of other partners that the board has connected with recently that we could, we can loop in. Um, recently in one of our meetings, we appointed a, uh, an advisory committee. I think Bob can speak about this a little further, but really that's a group of sort of industry experts that this future group can turn to and ask, say, you know, how do we, how do we start, you know, reaching out to large benefactors that we can, you know, get to provide some funding. Uh, what type of programming do you think would be best in this? Uh, or the programming we have set up, does that align? Or what connections do you have in these other communities so that we can work together? Um, so, uh, you know, I think that's a benefit to expanding beyond the Friends of State Theater. And, you know, when I've spoken with them, they just want to see that theater preserved and protected, and they're on board to participate in any capacity that we, you know, we would want them to. So well, let me walk, walk you through the steps. Sure. So the, the steps, uh, if, if, this is, if this passes in town meeting, um, the, the first step would be for the Board of Selectmen to have an RFP it drawn up and issued for a nonprofit to operate, to take over operating control of the facility, a, a, a nonprofit that would have the depth and strength and resources to make it go, a nonprofit that might have programming that they would want to offer there. We know because the ch president of Old Colony Y heard about this and he stepped up and came to a joint meeting of the Board of Selectmen and Redevelopment Authority to urge the town to not lose this opportunity and to indicate, and he even wrote us a letter saying they are interested in this role. So uh, step up a long-term uh, operating control because if we don't do that, you know, this board is committed to making it work. Um, we probably would, if it need be, you know, man the ticket booth, uh, if, if that would have took. But we don't want to do that, nor are we. Nor is that our, our, our function. So the first step would be to get the nonprofit in place. I see the Friends of Stoughton Theater as not quite having the capability uh, to take on the operating control. That would mean running the renovations. That would mean taking care of the booking. That would mean offering the pro all of that management stuff. Um, but Friends of Stoughton Theater is having a, a role in making sure that the integrity of the building, the historical aspect of it, and supporting the fundraising effort. And within that process, you have programming for the site developed. So if it's possible to phase the reoccupation of the building and get stuff up and running, uh, the, the Friends of the State Theater would be involved, I hope, in, in evaluating that but it actually be booked and run and managed and the rent collected and everything assured by the operating entity. Um, and little by little, we'll get the thing back up and running. What we, what we know from what we've heard from other theater operators, I've been in touch with them, Christine's been in touch with them, is it works. Uh, what we know from talking to the master plan consultants who worked with us and, and is that other communities would give both eye teeth to get a theater that they could get back up and running. So this group of advisors, uh, Steve Cavey deserves the credit for uh, recruiting them, mm -hmm. were f are, are people who have done it or are doing it in other communities with theaters that are either brand new or uh, I think two theaters that are of the same vintage as ours and they've made it work. 
And, and so they have a commitment and they're interested in, in helping us do it because they've done it before. And you know, I'm sure it's not limitless, but what we hear is there's a limitless commitment to them. There's four areas that this theater gives us. One is um, you know, the entertainment aspect, cultural, um, economic development, and then energy and sustainability. I see a great role for our energy and sustainability a committee to become involved in this demonstration, making it work. Each one of those areas is a separate resource for funding to help redevelop it. Each has uh, different uh, grant and loan and financing opportunities. And with the right nonprofit engaged, we can connect into those. One thing that one of the larger nonprofits have has told us is if, if we acquire it, they will work with us to connect us with their financial supporters to make it work. That's how committed people out there are and what a difference it makes if the town acquires it because if the town acquires it, they see it can, it'll work. What, at what point does the town kind of start to take some steps back and once that nonprofit's in place, allows the nonprofit to, to run, what, what exactly would the relationship be? And I'll just use this as an, as an example. I'm not sure if viewers would be aware, but the Board of Selectmen hold Stoughton Media Access as charter. However, you're not involved in our day-to-day -day operations, but there have been other towns that have dissolved their, their cable uh, access centers, board of directors, and just because it's not running the way they envision it, is that the type of partnership you would see that there, that always that board of directors for the theater would always answer back to the board of selectmen, or is there a point where eventually their their own independent entity, they're just a, a regular business like you would have no other jurisdiction over them other than maybe granting a, a license for operation? I mean, honestly, both both options are, are possible. I think we envision having that um, closer oversight initially as it's as it's underway. Um, but there's no there's no th nothing saying in 10, 15, 20 years that the board would need to continue oversight if it's a successful theater that has a strong relationship with the town and is providing all the things to it um, that we envision it doing. I mean, we, we would like to see the space open to um, community events in addition to just, you know, potentially private acts or things like that. So I think that's the commitment we would expect from any of the partners involved as well. And that's actually the, the sound. We were initially were planning a 30-minute show. We still have some other topics. Do you have another 10 or 15 minutes to, sure, to yeah. stick around? So well, Let me supplement that sure. by saying, so the way to deal with this is, is with the RFP that we would issue. Mm -hmm. So we will, in our RFP for the nonprofit, identify w what our goals would be by the entity that would take it on. My own view is that if we could sign the document that would turn over operating control, that would end town involvement with the facility because the document will spell out what is the responsibility and expectation very clearly to the operating entity. And there are benefits to that f for the town under the Community Preservation Act and under the own, there are ben financial benefits that would work and then we would monitor. Uh, it, that's one of the reasons for a very clear RFP and one of the reasons why, if we just use Old Colony, why as an example, having a nonprofit with that strength stepping up and urging us and indicating as they have in writing that they are interested in that role is key. That tells me as a selectman that it is worth pursuing because you have uh, a credible opportunity to go forward. So it would be sign <laughs> really signing that document mm. to me would be the, the, the end of town involvement. And then as the property becomes viable, we have a plan for payment in lieu of taxes so that the, the, you know, the, the operating cost to the community for providing police and other protection, fire safety, rescue, things like that are covered. So we, we make sure that's covered. So not, I don't want to play glass half empty, but let's say two things. One, let's say town meeting does not vote in favor of this. What's the next step for the town to take? Um, as I could tell from both of you, you're very passionate about this. You want the theater to be saved and you 
believe it's a, a key to downtown revitalization. What if town meeting does not agree with you? Or I should rephrase that, does not agree with pur purchasing the theater, just doesn't want the town to get involved. I mean, I think that would, that would probably end town involvement. Um, and then I think a group such as the Friends of State Theater would then continue to pursue their fundraising in an attempt to acquire the, the property. Um, if that was the will of town meeting, then we'd have to sort of go by that. I would think that maybe if it fails in the fall, we maybe had some shortcomings and would get feedback and see if there's any information that maybe would be lacking that the residents would want to see before potentially presenting it again. Um, but that would be a clear indication, uh, sort of the affirmative decision that the town has decided that this is not important and they don't want to pursue its, its acquisition. I think we could still um, you know, support the group such as Friends of State Theater and those of us that find that important um, to do, to try to acquire it in another avenue. But as we've stated before, you know, the, it's kind of, sort of at a critical juncture right now in terms of um, the things the town can do working with the developer and then working with um, the nonprofit groups as we've described in grant funding and so on. So I think it's, you know, this is, this is the point in time where we need to decide if we actually do believe this theater is important, um, as all of the plans have stated, um, and, and actually make that decision, take that affirmative step to either acquire it and save it or, or let it go. There were three decisions. Mm -hmm. the, uh, or, or the decision will have three outcomes, three possible outcomes. One decision is you know, the path to, yeah, I'm convinced it will work, I'm all in. The second is, I don't know, uh, but I understand there are consequences, and those consequences are all unacceptable. And so if you take the first one and the second possible outcome, they say acquire the theater, because at a minimum you preserve your options, since the option that happens if you don't acquire it is unacceptable. And the third one is, you will accept, as a community, whatever happens in the square with another crater in the middle of the square, beyond the control of the town and the taxpayer and the businesses to control. To me, it's that simple. And so if you, if you like the downtown the way it is, and you like the way that it's been progressing, you don't acquire the theater because you know that uh, if we don't acquire the theater, what the direction of the downtown will be. But if you think we can and should do better, you acquire the theater because there's opportunity there that if we don't take it, we will lose and we will never ever get it back. I wanna move on to the last uh, two topics I wanna delve into first is related to downtown redevelopment. We'll move across the street from the theater, diagonally across the street to uh, the Malcolm and Parsons site, as, as, as it's known. Um, I understand there was discussion of, of that property at the uh, November 13th Board of Selectmen meeting um, as well. And I know that that, especially when people see the, the State Theater being discussed, they also go, well, why can't we take the Malcolm and Parsons building? That one's been a hole in the ground for you know a decade, so uh, what's the latest with that building? Okay, you can go ahead. so <laughs> so let's zoom out a little bit so people understand. Fire was almost ten years ago. I think mm -hmm. uh, on February twenty fifth, two thousand sixteen, the planning board approved a plan to rebuild on that site. That vote allowed the developer sixty days to locate four parking spaces to comply with the bylaw. The problem with that is the bylaw required that the parking spaces be part of the application when it was filed. The problem with it is that when the application was filed, it had to include an agreement that would become effective upon approval of the application that all the parking problem would be solved. That didn't happen. And so for almost three years, we've had that project in limbo in the search for four parking spaces. In that nearly three years, that 
project has not been on the agenda for the planning board once. Not once. Instead, there's been an urge for the town to, to deliver four parking spaces for the developer, which the town, as a matter of state law, may not lawfully do. We just can't be selling off to one private developer four parking spaces in the downtown. Um, so what the board did in February was conduct a review. Once the board was rec reconstituted, we conducted a review. And then we had, periodically, people come back for the status. When we were looking at a fall special town meeting, um, we didn't see progress. So we had drafted two warrant articles. Uh, one warrant article with the idea that the redevelopment authority could take on the redevelopment of that site, because their middle name is redevelopment. The night that came up, we were told that the current owner had solved the problem, and that within two weeks, a new plan would be filed, that ground would be broken, that the demolition would be over the winter, and the construction would begin. At last night's meeting, it was a follow-up, because in the five or six weeks since we heard that, nothing. So we put it on the agenda. We were told that a plan was filed yesterday. Um, we were told that no one can tell how long it will take to get through those plans. We were told no one can come up with a construction schedule. So we asked the chairman of the redevelopment authority who was there if he would inquire of the redevelopment authority whether it would undertake to redevelop this site if the current developer doesn't fulfill his commitment. So we hope to hear back from the Redevelopment Authority after the next meeting. And based on what we've seen, um, I can only speak for myself, is that I intend to ask the board to put an article on the Springtown meeting so that we can move the property to the Redevelopment Authority to get that site redeveloped. It should be in private hands, it shouldn't be town, but whatever's going on isn't working, and we can't put up with it anymore. So we can have town government work in close um, relationships with the current owner to get it done. But the consequences to the town, in my opinion, 10 years with a hole in the ground is way too long. So we, if the town can't work with the developer, whatever the reasons are, I think the town expects us, and I think we're prepared to take the action to get that hole in the ground fixed. I don't know how Christine feels, but that's, that's what happened last night and where, where I would like to see us go, which is the developer do his project and get it done. But by next spring, no more hole in the ground and people wondering what are we going to do with it. Yeah, so sort of the next steps are that the plans will go through the review process with the various town departments. Uh, there will be a public hearing in December. I don't recall the exact date. 12th. Uh, December 12th, thank you. And um, Hopefully, a construction schedule will emerge after all of this um, for us to see and review and at least be apprised of the steps that are being taken. Um, so we can, you know, it seems like a little bit of pressure by having this on our agendas and discussing it has caused some next steps to happen and some progress to be made. So I think by continuing to check up on this and, f and follow it closely, um, hopefully we'll see actually ground broken according to the schedule that they originally uh, laid out. So. Those are sort of the next steps with this project, at least. And lastly, let's talk about the public safety building. Uh, the, the last project we talked about, the Malcolm and Parsons, wasn't included on the special town meeting warrant. The public safety building is included on the special town meeting warrant, which is coming up uh, November 27th. And there are two articles. The first article, Article 1, is an acquisition of the a site for a public safety building. Article 2 is the design phase of the public safety building. So or we could talk about that both together, uh, where that stands right now. You're looking to put the police department and the fire department together in one uh, building, one headquarters. Uh, if you drive through Foxborough, that's a community nearby that does it, lots of other communities as well. Um, where does that stand right now? Well, it's important to emphasize the current chiefs and the previous chiefs both support this as a way to, to manage their departments and to because they work so closely together. Um, where it stands is that s staff 
uh, working with the board, has developed a, a very thorough set of search criteria for, for sites. And those criteria have been used to identify uh, sites. We're engaged with the property owner now uh, on, on site selection. Uh, and so these two articles are intended to allow us to have the funds to buy a site and to prepare drawings so that when we come to the spring town meeting, we will be able to produce and say, this is what we want to build and how we want to build it. Yeah, so um, to sort of build off of what Bob is saying, um, in terms of the site selection, um, the criteria that we used was based off of a previous plan that had been put together for a joint public safety building. Um, and we did issue a request for proposals uh, to solicit um, four sites that met the criteria that we were seeking. We didn't get any responses to that RFP, so now we're able to uh, engage um, with our, our preferred sites that the town staff, as you described, um, identified. And in terms of the schematic design article, um, this is we intend for this project to follow the same formula as the high school building um, project has in terms of presenting the schematic design to have sort of the preferred uh, layout and then come to town meeting with, with that one sort of cost, that vote for what the whole project will cost in terms of an architect and uh, construction costs. And so we, we really want to follow, follow that model so that we can get um, the most open, transparent, and um, best process for, for constructing this building. Uh, because we think that based on the feedback we've gotten from the high school building committee, um, that's really the way to go. And, and also to ensure that it's done correctly um, and we don't end up having to build another building in 25 years. So, so you're ultimately looking to keep the Central Street Fire Station. Um, however, the Freeman Street Fire Station and the Rose Street Police Station would no longer be used in that capacity and you would be placing a central public safety center in another location in the community. Is that correct? Do you, do you have a, another, uh, or rather, will you have the location or be close to having the location by November 27th so that when town meeting begins, you could say, and it's going to be not, will be located in some place in town, but it'll be located here in town. That's the goal. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. we, we believe it's important to keep the process going. Mm -hmm. Addressing the Freeman Street Fire Station should have been something the town did. We all bear responsibility for that. It's something that could have, should have, would have been done 20 or 30 years ago. The, having that facility there for the men and women working out of that facility and then for the, for the equipment and for the ability to provide you know, fire uh, and, and rescue services to the town, we have to do better. And we built a new police station that was as, as you know, as even former Selectman Cohn would say, that building never should have been built and it was but bad when it was put up and we should replace it. Operationally, there are serious deficits in both structures that impair today the ability of public safety services. And so when we look ahead and we hear from our police and fire chiefs and their staff, about where public safety services are going and, and what we will need from them in order to provide for our community, those buildings don't work. So our commitment is to say, we know this. Again, let's make an affirmative decision. We're either going to do what we don't want to do, but we know we have to do when we could have, should have, would have done before, or we're going to put up with something because for whatever reason, uh, these facilities will stay where they are, and we decide that's okay. I haven't heard anybody say it's okay to keep Freeman Street Fire Station, and once folks understand the deficits in the police station, such as no private interview rooms for detectives, right? So it's like watching an episode of Barney Miller, right, where they bring people in and they sit in the squad room. Okay, that I mean, that's just think of the host of problems with that. Uh, we had issues with mold control. There's, I mean, the chief if she, can just spend a lot more time and a lot more detail going through this. Operationally, it's not good enough for this community. 
and I'm thrilled to see signs on lawns that say support Stoughton Police because part of supporting Stoughton Police is to make sure they have the facility they need to do their job. And what this article will allow us to do, um, if, if we have that site or not, well, at least to be able to continue negotiating um, to acquire the site so that we can actually acquire it in due time and be prepared to come to town meeting in the spring. Um, one of the articles that we aren't going to talk about today, but is in is sort of one of the reasons for this town meeting initially, is to um, increase the funding for, I believe it's was it the water um, station, the um, water, treatment, water plant. treatment plant. The, and that is because the cost of construction is just going up at an exponential rate. So the longer we delay and the longer we put these things off, the more expensive these projects are going to become. Um, and so we'd like to get moving um, as soon as we can so that we actually make it more cost effective for the taxpayer in the long run. And so acquiring sites doesn't get easier. You know, people who have property that's available for sale, a, a typical way for maybe our town government to buy property might take a year and a half, right? Mm -hmm. You have your fee, well, it is asking an awful lot and I don't think you get it for some, well, fine, a, a seller will say, it's gonna take a year and a half, I'd like to sell it now, but I'll wait and I'll agree to the sale price whatever today for what it'll be in a year and a half. We know what property values are doing, which is in a year and a half, it could cost us you know, 15 or 20% more if we can get it, chances are. And we had an opportunity this past year to acquire a site that would have done a dramatic improvement to the golf course, whether we wanted to invest it in the golf course or the golf course would go on to another life. And we lost that opportunity all because of timing. So th these are opportunities we can't let pass by just because they pass. If we affirmatively decide that the risk of not being able to succeed is better than giving ourselves the opportunity to succeed, that's fine. But that's how town meeting votes. But that's w where I think we're coming from is we know we need to do this and we know what we'll need to do this. Let's give ourselves the tools to get it done. So before I sign off, either of you have any final thoughts? Um, I, I just hope that the residents will sort of read all the information we've put out, um, do their homework, and make that affirmative decision as we've been repeating here. Decide whether, you know, you actually want to see these projects move forward and that they're important enough to, to pass them at town meeting. I'd like to speak on costs. We're very mindful of cost. We're, we're seeking to do things that we think uh, we need to do. That the, that the cost of not doing them will be much greater than the cost of doing it, and that these are things that ultimately we will have to do. So bearing in mind that it'll be more expensive and harder later, we're better off doing it now. And the other thing we haven't talked about is all we're up to, to improving the tax base, because the residents rightfully should not, we, we're residents in town, I don't wanna pay more taxes. Uh, so we, we are working very hard on another avenue to give ourselves the revenue to pay for these projects and to do projects that will generate revenue and in a way that we can get grants and other things to help us. Great. Well, I want to thank both of you, Christine Howe and Bob O'Regan, both members of the Stoughton Board of Selectmen. They were here on uh, this edition of Stoughton Spotlight, spent a few extra minutes with us so we can get all of our topics in, uh, in part previewing the special town meeting, which is coming up November 27th at the Daw Elementary School, and also giving us some uh, hot off the presses uh, um, takes on the hiring of the new town manager, uh, Robin Muxian. So I want to again thank both of you for joining you. us, and of Thanks, course, Jeff. want to thank CJ Mullen and Dave Young, who uh, did all the magic behind the scenes making this show possible today. So thank you for tuning in. I'm Jeffrey Pickett, and I'll see you next time on Stoughton Spotlight.